Hey, what's up guys? Clint here back with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I built this React JS portfolio web application using Tailwind CSS. It's going to be great. You guys it's going to be awesome. Check this out. I've had a lot of people asking me how to build a portfolio website or just giving them some examples. And I can show you this. You don't have to be a great designer to put together a portfolio. They'll get you a job in tech. So feel free to use this. Help yourself get a job. If you want to add stuff to it, stuff to it that's awesome too. Uh, throw down in the comments what you add. I'd love to see it. So check this out. This is what we're going to be building. We're going to be using, like I said, React.js and Tailwind CSS. We're also going to be using a couple dependencies, React icons and React Smooth Scroll. So here is our kind of home section here. Got a custom logo. I'm going to show you how to do all this. We have a nice little, uh, some icons on the left. As we hover over, they kind of slide out from the side. Looking nice. Very nice. Then we have a little uh, button transition here using Tailwind CSS. And then we're also using, like I said, React Smooth Scroll. So this is our home section. When I click the About, we're going to get a nice scroll down to our About section using our grid system. Then we click on Experience. It's going to bring us down here. We have some nice uh, custom icons I designed in Canva. And as you uh, hover over these, get a nice little scale effect. Boom. And I'm going to throw all these in a GitHub so you have access to all the files here. Then we click on uh, uh, Work here. Boom. Nice little transition. This is down to our Portfolio section of our website. So as we hover, we get a nice little tailwind transition, to the React JS application, a little bit of information about the project, and then a, a two buttons here, a link to demo our application, then also a button to view the code that we're going to host on GitHub here. So this is what we're doing here. And then down on the contact form, boom. Now this contact form, very, very powerful stuff. Awesome stuff. You guys were using gitform.io. This form right here is 100% functional. We can uh, send a submission, a name, email, message, whatever you like. And then we can even set up some automation so the sender gets some information back, get an automatic email back to them. Very, very powerful stuff. This is a great portfolio website. Like I said, feel free to use it so you can get a job in tech. If you want to add some stuff, that's cool too. I'd love to see it. So this is also 100% fully responsive. Let's take it down to a mobile size here. Boom, there we go. Everything is looking nice. There you go. Responsive nav bar here. We can scroll down. Everything is just looking beautiful. So I know my image is down there kind of covering it. So apologies for that. But I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch. We're going to start off in a VS Code, just a blank editor here. And I'm going to show you how to do everything from the beginning. So like I said, feel free to use this in your own uh, as your own portfolio. And let me know if it helps you out. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So here we are in VS Code. I have a blank code editor open. What I'm going to do is just press the control back tick button to open up our little uh, terminal down here. And then I'm going to change the uh, directory to my desktop here. And then once I'm in there, let's go ahead and create a React app. You can use a NPM or Yarn. I'm going to be using Yarn for this tutorial. So I'm going to write Yarn create and then React dash app. And then let's call this portfolio um, React app. Now go ahead and press enter. This will only take a moment, you guys. All right, it says happy hacking. That means we are ready to go. What I'm going to do is just drag over the, the folder we just created. This is our create react application here. I did mine in yarn. So let's just have a look. I'm going to press the control back tick button, get our little uh, terminal here. And I'm just going to type yarn start type NPM start if you uh, uh, created it with NPM. So this will start up our development server here. Yes, there we go. It should open it up on port 3000, maybe 3001 for me since I already have the original build open here. So there we go, just like that. Now let's go into our source folder here. We're just going to be working out of our source folder. So don't worry about the public or anything else. So what I'm going to do first is kind of just clean up a few, a few files that we're not going to be using here. So I'm going to click this uh, setup test, the report web vitals, the logo.svg, the app.test, and also the app.css. What I'm going to do is just delete all of those just to get those out the way. There we go. We're going to get some errors. That's okay. Let's go into our index.js so we can address these errors here. So the report web vitals, let's get rid of that. And that should be enough for our index.js. Now our app.css, we can remove all this boilerplate code because we're not going to be using that. We're actually going to be using Tailwind. And then up here, we can just remove all of that there. So everything should be uh, working properly now. Just a blank page here. Now, first things, what we want to do is install, um, we want to install Tailwind. So we left this index.css file open. So let's leave that. Now let's go to Tailwind and I'm going to show you how to install Tailwind CSS. Let's go to tailwindcss.com. Go ahead and click the get started tab here. Then under framework guides, we're going to be using the create react app framework here. So we've already installed our, our react application here. So what we need to do, just go down here and just copy this npm install. Uh, I'm using yarn, so I'm going to copy this. If it doesn't work, 
uh, if you copy this uh, 100%, sometimes you leave out that development dependency there, it works a little bit better. So we can go ahead and close our server and I'm just gonna add yarn, add, and then tailwind, there we go. And then after that, we're gonna want to type in npx tailwind dash init. Close that down there. So npx tailwind css init p. And this is gonna create our tailwind.config file here. There it is right here. Boom, perfect. So almost done. Back over here in Tailwind website, it wants us to copy this in right here. So there we go. I'm just gonna copy that. You should already have this little content array in here. So I'm just gonna paste it inside there and that should be it there. So, oh, we forgot. You gotta copy these three files and we're gonna put them in our index.css file. There we go. And we can actually just delete all that because we're not gonna need any of that there. So now Tailwind should be configured properly. I'm gonna drag this back down. There we go. So let's check back to our application here, app.js. And I'm gonna get a H1 here. Hello, now this should be just normal text size. Let's have a look, let's refresh. Uh oh, forgot to start up my server. Yarn start or NPM start for using, there we go. Yes. So using Tailwind, it kind of does a lot of default styles. So our H1 is not gonna be some huge bold text here. It's gonna be just small text right there. So, and then we can add a class name. If we wanna make it large, we can do text uh, XL, sorry, XL, or even uh, text to XL, so you notice a little bit bigger, and we can make it bold with uh, font bold. Boom, perfect, just like that. So this is Tailwind CSS. And notice we can hover over this. Make sure you get this application, if you or this, uh, extension here if you're using tailwind css make sure boom this right here tailwind css intellisense highly highly recommend it it allows us to use uh, some snippets for uh, tailwind so very very powerful uh and very very helpful save you a lot of time if you're just learning tailwind so in here we have our react uh react application here we can close all these other files for now now i'm going to go ahead and set up the structure of our application here we're going to have an assets folder and also a components folder so this is gonna be a real small application. So it's not gonna be very difficult to, to manage here. So source, you have our assets, and also components folder here. So what I'm gonna do now, I already have all my uh, icons that we're using here and all my images. I'm just gonna pull those over into my assets folder here. Boom, there we go. Now, feel free to add your own. If you want, I'm gonna put a link to the GitHub down in the description below. So feel free to just clone this or go in and download all these files and you can use all of those. So boom, there we have all of our assets in here now. So, yep, there they are. Now let's go into our component uh, our component folder here. And what we're gonna do is first let's create our, let's create our navbar component. So what I'm gonna do, sorry, not a folder, but we're gonna create a file, navbar.jsx. And inside our navbar folder, or navbar um, file here, I'm gonna type RAFCE to generate a functional component this is React ES7 um, React Redux uh, snippets here. So highly recommend you get that as well. Where is it at? Just so you can see what it looks like. This is it right here. Highly, highly recommend you get this. We'll save you a bunch of time uh, while you're coding. So here we have our nav bar. And what we're gonna want to do is, um, let's go ahead and import some React icons while we're at it here. So let's create another little terminal here. So I'm gonna use yarn, add, react, dash, icons. Now we're gonna have access to all of our icons here. There we go. And I'm gonna go and close that. And let's check our package.json just to make sure. Yep, there it's at right there. So in our nav bar, let's go ahead and start um, throwing this thing together. So I'm gonna class name, and I want this to be fixed. I don't want it to, to move. Whenever we scroll, I always want it to be fixed at the top. So I'm gonna give it a fixed, uh, um, class name there, and then I'm going to say the width is full, and that's saying the width is 100%. Then we're going to say a height of 80 pixels, and instead of saying one, two, three, four, it's going to count by rim. You can actually just throw up some some brackets here, and you can define your own dimensions. So inside these brackets, I'm just going to say 80 pixels, and this is works for percentages, rem, pixels, anything you'd like to use. So there we have that. Now we want to have a flex, and let's do a justify between, and that's gonna be the space between there. And then we'll do items center here. 
and let's do padding X, which is padding on the, the um, X axis is going to be to four, which is one rim. And then for our background, so I'm actually going to use a, a custom background color and see that this is how we add colors and tailwind. But if you want to add your own custom color, we're going to do background and then open up our curly brackets here or sorry, not a curly brackets, just our brackets here. And let's add in our hex code. And it is going to be zero a one nine two F get a nice little blue here. And let's go ahead and import this so we can see what we're doing. So this is going to be our nav bar. We can auto import that. There we go. So this is our background right here. Looking nice. I'm going to go ahead and open this up a bit so we can see a little better. So after we have that, let's go in our text here and for our text, let's just do a color here. Let's do gray, um, gray 300 for now. Now let's add in some, some information here. So we're going to create another div and inside this div is going to be our logo. So let's go and import our logo here. So this is how we Im import images in react JS here. So in our assets, we're looking for logo.png is my initials here. Boom, there we go. If you want to create your own, that's fine too. I use Canva to design this logo. Very, very easy. So in here, I'm going to call this logo from as the assets and then logo.png. There we go. And while we're at it, let's go and import our react icons as well. So let's import, let's throw these in some curly brackets. We're going to use the FA bars and then also the FA times. We had to import these from react icons slash FA. If you're going to react icons, a website, you see all the icons there. If you're going to be importing them, make sure on the, instead of just saying react icons, you add this little pretext for the, uh, the icon you're using. Otherwise you will get an error. So hope you can save some time there. Now in here, this is going to be where our logo is. So we're going to have an image instead of these quotes here, we're going to have some curly brackets. Let's say logo. And just to give an alt that we react will not throw the error at us. Boom. There we go. Now, that looks uh, horrible because it's huge. So we can add some styling. I'm just going to add some inline styling just like this because it's super easy. And I'm going to say width of, I have to put that in quote, 50 pixels. This is how we do inline styling in React JS there. So boom, there we go. Looking nice. And our other div here, other div is going to be an unordered list and then have some LIs in here. This would be a list item. And let's have a home here. And there we go. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this down a few times because we're going to have a, an about section and then we're going to have, let's see, an experience and then, or we could even say skills experience. Let's do, do make this skills. There we go. And then we'll have, uh, let's see work and let's copy this down one more time for a contact here. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Now outside of this div here, we want to have, we'll see, let's drop this down here. I'm going to make a couple notes here. So this is menu. And then just underneath here, we'll have a, um, we'll say hamburger and add our div here. Boom. And then we'll also have mobile menu. And then also in our nap bar, we're actually going to set up our uh, social icons as well. So we'll have a div down there for that one. Now this hamburger menu here, let's go ahead and add in our uh, icon here, react icon. So the way we use that, we're going to open up our, um, our tag here and I'm going to say F a bars. Boom. There it is. Go ahead and close that. So we should have it right there. And then on this mobile menu, we want to have instead of a div, let's just use an unordered list for this here. Boom. There we go. And for our unordered list, I'm actually just going to copy this in for now and save that. So prettier takes care of that nice little extension. Boom. So what we want to do actually is let's hide this. Let's give it the class name of hidden. Then also a uh, class name of hidden on the bars as well. Boom. There we go. So let's go ahead and install this menu here. So for this menu, this UL right here, what we want to do, is give it the class name. We want this to display as flex. Boom. There we go. Now in these list items, instead of styling each list item, what we can do in a tailwind is actually, um, apply, apply the styling to all elements here. So what I'm going to, I'm going to close this and let's go into our index.css uh, here. And what I'm going to say in this index file here, so 
also I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in, uh, some, my, sorry, my font, what I'm going to be using here, I'm going to be using the railway font. It's a Google font here. So I'm just going to copy that in. Boom. There we go. I assume you kind of know how to do that. If not, it's pretty easy here. Just go to Google and you can just add in some fonts. So what we need to do here is to reuse or apply styling to all in uh, Tailwind. We can say the at symbol, then layer base. There we go. Now let's open up some curly brackets here. And what we can do here is actually say, um, apply to, so what I'm going to do is, is, um, apply this font to, to the body here. So I'm going to say body here, then open up our tag and we can say apply. And then what we want to say is the, the styling here. So I can say font, then um, railway is not in here, but if we open up our curly brackets, we now have access to it and we can just say railway just like so. And then also that's it for body. Now for our list items, just the same way, we're gonna open that up and just say apply. And then what I want to say is um, P, sorry, PX4 padding on the X axis of one rim. And then also we want to do, you have to do apply even for uh, multiple styling here, cursor, and we're going to use cursor pointer. So that should be looking good there and in index. Everything is displaying properly. Let's pull this open widescreen. So what it happened is actually our div here. Let's give it a class name of hidden. Boom. There we go. Now everything should be looking as it should on uh, desktop devices. That is perfect. That's what we want. Now let's hide this thing because we won't want the, our, our main menu here to show. So what I'm going to say, give this a class name of, um, I actually want to say hidden and the way tailwind CSS works is a minimum width first. So it's a, it's a mobile first, uh, design approach here. So what we can say here is, um, is we want this to display as, as, um, flex here. Boom. There we go. But we only, and it's giving us an error, but you cannot have two positioning or two display properties on the same line unless you're using a media query. So what I want to say is anything above, um, anything above medium there, which I believe is 768 pixels on the breakpoint. Anything above uh, medium, and it should uh, display here. So I can actually just copy this down here. You can use it on this on order list. I'll just say medium flex hidden. There we go. So, and we can actually just kind of we can probably just get rid of this div. I don't even think we need that div there. Or we can just use that as so. So let's open this thing up. It's we're under 768 pixels, so nothing is displaying. Then once we break that, boom, there we go. Now moving on to our our bars here, what we want to have there is to display. Um, basically, we want it to display as um, <clears throat> on. We want this to display on all things, so we just keep this hidden. And what we can just say is anything over medium, it'll hide. So at our in the same breakpoint. For our flex. So as soon as this hamburger goes away, we should see our menu. That's what we want right there. Now for our, for our mobile menu here, what we actually want to do here is we're going to add some styling and what we're going to do, we want to position this, this mobile menu here. We actually don't want it to be hidden for now. We wanted to position it as absolute. So we're going to see what it's going to look like as we style here. So if it's absolute, we're going to uh, define this positioning here. So top zero left zero, we want the width to be full in the height to be um, 100 viewport height. So it's H dash screen for 100 viewport heights. We're starting to see some stuff over here. Now let's give this a, uh, a background. What I'm going to use is actually this one up here. I'm just going to copy that down. There we go. Boom. That's what we want. Now we also want to display this as flex with a flex column, uh, justify center. And then also we'll say items center. So these kind of sit right in the middle of the page there. So I'm going to press control B to kind of collapse that down. So we have some more room. So, and for this one, I am going to add some styling in here. I don't want to go in and do the, um, kind of overload our index.css file just yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to press this uh, alt button so I can type in uh, multiple cursors here at once. Neat little trick there. Just have, hold down your alt tab there. Sorry, your alt button. So now we can type on all lines uh, simultaneously here. So I'm going to give this a class name of py-6 and that is i think 1.5 rim on the y-axis top and bottom here and then let's also make this text pretty big here let's say 4x 4xl boom that's what we want right there so notice our hamburger uh, button's not showing that's okay we can add a z index to that switch so type z10 that's going to change the z index to 10 and now we can see that there so that's what we want there now 
<clears throat> we don't want this to show all the time, of course. We want to be able to click our, our menu to toggle that. So what I'm going to say right now, I'm just going to add in hidden just so we can hide that for now. Now let's add some state here so we can actually toggle our, our nav bar. So I already added state here. So what you can do here, yours is probably going to look like this right here. So when you scroll up to the top, we're going to import the use state here. Boom, use state. There we go. And then just under this nav bars, we're going to keep our state. So it's going to say const. We're going to open up our bra bracket. It's going to take two values. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to say nav. And common convention is to say set nav or set whatever value the first one was there. We're going to say equal to use state. And I'm going to give this a default value as false for now. And then we also need to use um, have a, a click function here. So I'm going to define our arrow function. This is what I'm going to make it there. And I'm going to call it handle click another uh, common convention here. Like I said, arrow function here, and we don't have to use any curly brackets because I'm just going to um, point to one thing here and it's going to be set the value of nav to the opposite of its current value right there. So if it's true, it's going to set it to false. If it's false, it's going to set it to true. So that is what we want right there. Now let's go down to our bars here and what we want to give this, we want to give this an on click. We want to run our function handle click. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Now for our mobile menu down here, what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna copy this. Let's remove that hidden for now. And I'm just gonna copy this from absolute all the way down to the item center. I'm gonna cut the whole thing out. Now let's replace replace these quotes with some curly brackets and we're gonna use a ternary operator. So what we wanna check, check the value of nav, right? So we wanna say the opposite of, if the opposite of nav is false or is true, right? We wanna set this style to hidden little colon here. Otherwise, I'm just, I'm going to paste in the rest of my styling here. So let's go ahead and click this and see if it works. It should be working correctly. Boom. There we go. That is what we want right there. You guys, everything is functional. However, we want the, the, a little X to show up there instead of our bars. So let's go into our hamburger here. We can actually just, uh, cut that out. And we're gonna do the same thing, a ternary operator, which works great for react. If it's only uh, true or false, it only works for true or false here. So what we want to say here is, um, Basically, same thing, opposite of nav, if it is true, we want to just show the uh, bars here. So FA bars, boom, there we go. Else, we want to show FA times. And we already imported them at the top there. Boom, there we go. So as we click that, everything looks as it should. Let's open this thing up. That's what we want right there. Perfect. All right, you guys. So that is our nav bar. Everything's looking nice. That looks clean, you guys. Follow along here. I hope this helps you in your, in your journey to get a, a job in tech here. So let's have a look. Let's do our uh, home section first or next here. So I'm going to press control B to open this back up and I'm just going to copy this color here just so I have it saved here because we're about to use it. Now for our components, I'm going to create another component and I'm just going to call it home.jsx. You can call it hero.jsx main doesn't matter in here. Let's generate another functional component with RAFCE. Boom, there we go. Now for our home, we're gonna just add in here. For our home, what we're gonna use, we're gonna use, um, let's go ahead and bring in an icon that we're gonna be using here. Boom, there we go. So let's import, and the icon we're gonna be using is hi arrow narrow right from, and then like I said earlier, we're importing it from React icons. Instead of slash fa, this one's hi. So there we go, perfect. Now we have access to that there. And you know what? I just forgot you guys. We forgot to add um, our social icons here. I'm going to roll this open. We forgot to add our social icons there. And I keep that in my nav bar component here. So let's go ahead and go back to our nav bar real quick so we can add those in um, at the bottom here. So we may even made a little section for it. There we go. Nav bar hidden. Boom. So I'm going to take away um, that hidden for now. And inside here, this is going to be kind of our, um, we'll, we'll say this, we'll say, uh, say flex and we have this to be positioned as fixed, uh, flex column and then top, we're going to open up our brackets here so we can use 35%, close that out. There we go. And we want this display left zero here. So let's actually throw in some icons and we're going to make this an unordered list here on our list and li boom there we go and inside of our li here i'm going to use my um 
Let's use an A tag here, boom. And then inside of our A tag, finally, I'm gonna say LinkedIn, LinkedIn, there we go. And then I'm gonna use my icon here. I have not imported it yet. Let's go ahead and import our icons so we have access to all of those. So along with this FA, we're also using it being FA GitHub, and we're gonna be using FA LinkedIn. There we go. And then the other two we're gonna be using is let's say import open up our curly brackets hi outline mail from react icons slash hi and then we're also going to do one more and it's going to be whoops it is going to be bs fill person lines fill and from we'll say react icons and this one you know it's going to be bs there we go uh, it looks like we have a little issue down here. Okay, I just didn't finish that. So the first one we're using is uh, Facebook. So let's say FA Facebook. There we go. Perfect. All right, so that's all I was looking right now. We don't have any style. Oh, you can kind of see it back there. So we don't have any styling yet. Let's go ahead and go to our home here. And in this, let's just add a background so we can see everything. So go ahead and paste what you had in that BG dash, open the curly bracket, 0A192F. There we go. Now, I'm going to add in this as well as here. Import our home. And I'm just doing this so we can have a color on our background so we can actually see uh, what we're doing there. It looks like you didn't import it. If you press Control Spacebar, usually I'll pop that up. Boom. So we can auto import it just like that. Save you a little bit of time. There we go. So for our home, let's give this. We're going to need to define some width full H screen. That should be good enough there. Perfect. Okay, so back to our nav bar. We have our, our uh, we have our logo in here, our, our Facebook there. What we're gonna do, let's make this a little bit bigger. So what we can do, actually can use, we have access to properties and React icons, and we can just use size, it's just one of their properties. And I'm gonna make it 30. There we go, that's a good size right there. Now for this list item here, what I want to add is, um, what I wanna list for this, for this list item, Let's give this a class name and we're going to do this for one and then we're just going to copy them all down just to save some time here. So width, and then I'm going to open this up, this bracket here, and I'm going to define 160 pixels as the width and the same for the height. I'm going to make it 60 pixels for the height. Now let's do flex, uh, justify between. So it kind of spreads them out there. Boom. And that should kind of push them apart. And we actually have to define some, uh, some more sizing here. Let's do items, whoops, items center here. Boom, there we go. Hmm, oh, you know what? We should be adding this to our, uh, we need to add this to our A tag as well. So let's just in here, gonna give us a class name on our A tag. We'll do flex, um, flex, so you just five, just five between, and then items, sender width full, which is a hundred percent. And let's do text gray, three hundred for a nice little off white there. That is what we want. I'm using pesticide here, so we can kind of see. Boom, that's what we want there. Looking pretty good so far. Um, there we go. Now it should spread apart there. Boom, that's what we want. Okay, perfect. So. I'm just gonna refresh those lines go away. That's looking good. Now we let's hide this thing off the screen here. So I'm gonna say margin left, and I'm gonna move this back over a hundred pixels. Boom, there we go. Now on hover, I wanna say margin left to we'll say negative 10 pixels. And this should kind of slide everything out. Boom, there we go. And now let's give a nice little duration of 300 which is 300 milliseconds so boom there we go slide out perfect just like that let's give this a background color so we'll say bg blue 500 or we'll try 600 here we'll see how that looks let's open this up some make sure we get it pretty similar so I said Facebook, I think we do LinkedIn. Let's add this, this one as a LinkedIn here. Mm, 
And there it is. Okay, perfect. That's what we want right there, you guys. Perfect. That's what we want. Looking nice. Looking nice. Now, all our styling is done for this. Now, now we get the easy part here. We press Control-B to close that down. Our list item here, what we can do is just copy that down. And we're going to have um, uh, three more there. So let's just copy that down. And this next one is going to be, what's the order we're doing? We're doing LinkedIn, then GitHub, email, and resume. So now, now it's all LinkedIn. The next one, like I said, GitHub, boom. And then let's just change this to FA GitHub. And then we're going to do the email. And what was our email? HI outline mail. There we go. And the last one, BS. Let's copy that down. There we go. And we can just say resume like so. Let's have a look. Perfect. So that's what we're right there. Let's change up these colors though. So for the, uh, for the GitHub, where's our GitHub? Boom. In there. Let's just say, I'm going to open up the curly brackets here and delete that instead. And like a nice little, um, black gray color there. Now for the next one, next one here, I'm going to add in a little custom color. You can use whatever you like. What I'm using here is going to be six F C two B zero. That should look good there. Boom. There we go. Now for our last one here is going to be kind of like an off uh, gray again here. And I'm going to define it myself and it is going to be five, six, five F six, nine. There we go. Now, of course, we only want these to, I only want these all here to display over uh, on large here because they kind of get in the way. So let's go to our container here for our social icons. And what we'll say is um, we want them to be hidden. And then anything over the large breakpoint, we want them to display as flex. So away they go. Let's open this thing up. I believe 1024 is the breakpoint for large. And boom, there they are. Everything is looking nice. So. We have those wrapped inside uh, on, of our nav bar component here. So that's where those are living. Done with the nav bar. So for our home here, we have our background that we have already set. So that's all we need to do there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a name property to this here. So name, then I'm just going to call this home. And what this is, we're going to be using this for React Smooth Scroll. So I'll show you here in a little bit. But just add a name there and we'll, we'll fix the rest later. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of add a, a coin container, a container here. I just like to make little notes whenever I'm coding here just to kind of keep some, um, kind of keep it organized a little bit. So this is going to be our container. Let's do a max. So class name of a max width. Now we can define this ourselves. I'm going to say just a thousand pixels here. And then MX auto, just saying margin auto. And then padding here is going to be eight flex flex column and then justify justify center boom there we go then height full so we can use our flex now in here is going to be all of our content so first what we're doing here is a p tag and this is going to say hi my my name is boom there we go then after that we're going to have an h1 i'm going to say my name clint clint briley there we go and then after the H1 tag, we're going to have an H2 tag. It's going to say, I'm a full stack developer. There we go. And then under that there, I'm just going to copy in some stuff here. Boom, there you go. Smash that like button, you guys, if you're liking the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to build this thing up. Boom, there we go. So after we can see, everything is displaying right there, as it should. Now we just need to add some styling in it to make it look like that. Let's go ahead and add our button down here too. So inside this container div, I'm going to add another div with a button. Boom. And we'll say view work. And then let's add in our React icon here, which is the arrow. So it is HI arrow. Boom. We already imported that. And there we go. So we should be able to see it there. Boom. There it goes. So let's go ahead and add some more styling to this here. So for this first one, 
for this first P tag, my name, hi, my name is, what we wanna say is, let's give this a color, text, pink, we're gonna be using 600, boom, there it is. Same color as my logo here at the top. I am not a designer, I just know how to make things kind of simplistic and clean, and I think that is the best choice. Uh, you can never go wrong doing it that way. So for this H1 tag, let's open this up. Let's give this a text, 4XL, and then anything above uh, a small, let's bump this up to a text, 7XL. There we go, we'll do font, bold, and then text. Let's do this, uh, I'm gonna give this a style here. It's gonna be CC d 6 f6 close that down there we go looking good and this should shoot up in size boom there it goes right after that small break point so that is what we want right there so for this next h2 class name and let's do the same thing text 4 xl and then anything above the 640 we'll do 7 xl font bold there we go now for this text it's going to be slightly different color a little bit darker gray let's do Eight eight nine two B zero. That is looking good right there. Perfect, perfect. Now <clears throat> make sure that is looking pretty good. Okay. Now for this text here, our little text. Let's do text, and then we're going to use that same color there that we just um, used. Eight eight nine two B zero. There we go. Perfect, and we'll do padding on the top and bottom of four, which is one rim. Let's do a max width, because I don't like how far that text takes up right now. Uh, looks okay on mobile devices, but as we get a little wider, I don't want this to go across the full width of the screen. So I'm just gonna say a max width of 700 pixels. Boom, that's good there, I think I, think I like that. And then we close down to mobile, it's still gonna use the full uh, width of the screen there. So that's Tailwind minimum with um, mobile first approach right there. Really love that stuff, you guys. Now for here for our button, let's go ahead and give a class some class to our button here, some styling. And what we wanna say, class name, we want the text to be white here, and then border two. This will give us a little thick border around it there. There we go. Now let's give a uh, some padding. We wanna do a PX6 to make it a little wide. Then PY, we'll do three, and margin, top and bottom, two, to bump it up a little bit there. So that is looking good. Now, we also want to say flex, and then items, center, to kind of level everything out there. Boom, there we go. And let's do some hover here. So we want this to hover. So we'll say on hover, we're going to use that pink there. So we'll say BG pink. 600 there we go let's have a look there we go and let's have the border change as well so we'll say hover whoop, border pink 600 there we go sorry about that pop up there you guys boom there we go now let's give a little margin to our arrow here so let's just give a class name to our icon and we'll say margin left uh two, which is 0.5 rim. I think it looks good, maybe four. Uh, let's meet in the middle there. So there we go. Now, what we wanna say is for this here on hover, what we're gonna wanna do on that button, whenever we hover, let's actually put a span. Let's gonna, I'm gonna take this away here, this hover, and I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna drop that down so we have a little room here so you can see. Let's do a span, and we're just gonna put this This here is what we want. It's gonna cut that and just put it inside of our span there. So for our span, let's give this a class name of, let's see, hover rotate 90, there we go. And then duration, we'll do 300. So let's have a look, boom, there we go. Now. The arrow moves down, but we want this to happen it's only when we hover over the icon. And we want this to happen when we scroll over the button. So for Tailwind, we have to put this in a group. So the way we do that here, I'm gonna save this so it kind of makes it pretty there. So our, our group here, our outer div is the button. So in here, I'm just gonna throw it right here. I'm just gonna define as group. 
Now in our span, what I can just say is group colon hover rotate. Now when we hover over the button, uh oh, still not happening there. So let's have a look. So group, sorry, not a colon here it is a dash. My apologies. So now when we hover, boom, the arrow rotates downward. That's what we want right there. Perfect. So let's have a look. That's our full thing right there. Let's open it up to widescreen. And that is our component right there. So as you can, oh, so right as it hides there, you can play with the, the dimensions here, you guys. I just want to show you how you can build a React JS application here, a portfolio that can get you a job here in tech. So that is my goal. So after the home component, the next one we're going to be doing, let's do the about component here. So I'm going to create a new file called, well, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it about.jsx here. So R-A-F-C-E, that is going to generate our, our functional component. And then now what we're looking for here in the about section, we're not going to be using any, any icons or anything like that. So what we can do next, we can actually delete that. This is going to be, let's give the name. So we use this for react scroll name. I'm going to name that about, well, sorry, not a class name, just a normal name here. There we go. I didn't want it to pick that up. Now let's give it a class name and we're going to do width full then H screen, which is a hundred viewpoint heights there. And then for our background, let's just copy this down again. I can never remember that color there. So let's just go ahead and paste that. And then for our text, let's do gray 300. That should be good. Now in here, this is going to be, let's do a div. And for this, let's do a class name, a flex, flex column, and then justify center. There we go. And we're gonna do item center width full h full now in here now we can kind of do our div this is going to be container div here so inside our container we're going to have another div with a p tag and with our p tag we want to say about there we go and what we're doing here after this div here we're going to add a div this is going to be empty and what i'm going to here i'm going to hide this Let's bring this in. Let's import about, boom, auto import at the top. There we go, boom. So right now this is gonna be on a grid, right now it's not, but we wanna set this on a grid system here. So I'm just gonna leave this pesticide going so we can see our lines. Now for our about, this is gonna be our parent div. So let's do this. We wanna give this class name a, um, we'll do max width and let's do the 1000 so 1000 pixels again, and we'll say with 100% x4, x4, there we go. And then grid and grid calls to two, and then we'll say a gap of eight. There we go. So that's what we want right there. Now we want to align this about so right now we're on mobiles first here, but we want to align that to the right there. So for this class name here, what we want to say is anything above small, we want to do the text right. Get here you can see. So otherwise it's going to stay there on the left. So anything above small, it's going to jump over to the right. That's what we want right there. Perfect. And let's do padding bottom of eight, which is two rim, then padding to the left, uh, one rim there. And let's blow this thing up a little bit. Let's do text for XL. There we go. Font bold inline. Uh, let's do border bottom four. And then for our border color, let's do, um, let's do pink 600. There we go. Perfect. 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 So that is what we want, you guys. Oh, you know what? Let's just take away this. Uh... There we go. That looks good right there. Now, underneath uh, this div, this is going to be just an empty div here. So 
after this right here, this grid template column, what we're going to do is essentially this same thing here. So I'm just going to copy that or let's just, we'll type it again here. So for this class name, like I said, max width, we're basically just repeating this here. We need to open up our curly brackets. So just repeating that uh, with full grid, grid calls two, and then gap to uh, to rem there. All right, now inside here, we're gonna have a div with a P tag, and it's gonna say, hi, I'm Clint, nice to meet you. Please take a look around. There we go. And then after this div here, let's save this. We can kind of format this thing. So that's one div. And then on the other side, looks like we're kind of stuck in here. So the way we can fix that, add one of these up there, we'll delete one here. That's what we want. So now our div on the other side, I'm going to just copy some text in here. You tag, and it should come in right over here. So perfect. Now, of course we don't want this display. So let's add, um, let's add some styling here. So on this P tag on mine, I'm going to give it text for Excel font bold. That's what we're going to want there. And let's align this. So anything above small, we'll do text. Damn it. Sorry about that. There we go. There we go. So that's what we want right there. That is looking great, you guys. I'm going to just remove these lines there from pedicide. So that's perfect. That is exactly what we want for our about component. Um, we still need to do a little styling because when we drop this thing down, we only want it to display one column over here and we need some padding here. So let's add this on this div. We'll do padding left. You know what? On this whole thing, PX4, that'll give us a little bit of room. Boom, there we go. And we actually want this to just drop down uh, one column here. So for grid, what we can say, anything above small, there we go. So Tailwind automatically um, puts it at, when you define grid, it automatically puts it to one here. So we can just define, if we want anything over one, we can define that here with our media query. So that is what we want right there. Let's have a look. Perfect. There we go. And so now what we want to do, that's it for our about section. Everything displays nicely. Boom, there we go. And we can change up some sizing here if we'd like. But I'm going to go on to the next component. And after that, um, after that component is what we're doing is, let's see here, we are doing the skills, I think we're going to say. So skills.jsx. Let's go ahead and generate our functional component there with R-A-F-C-E. Now for our skills, we're going to bring in all our images here. Boom, there we go. So for the images, I'm only going to bring in, I have quite a few images in here. So I initially was going to have, um, going back here initially, see, I have uh, eight here and I did have 10. I think it is a wise decision to maybe add a little bit, kind of declutter a little bit. You don't want to give your potential employer a list of skills, um, like too long of a list. You kind of, in my opinion, it's wise to kind of hone down on just a narrow few and, uh, even eight, I think is maybe too many. I would probably realistically just drop it down to six. Um, just so you know, and you want to make sure you know these, you guys. So don't just copy this because it's what I'm putting in there. Make sure you know these. If not, it's going to be a tough time in your interview and um, it probably is not going to go very well. So for our skills here, I'm going to go ahead and import a few things I'm going to be using here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually just copy that over just to save some time here. So what I'm doing, we're just importing images um, just like we did for the logo. I'm just going to call my name here. Boom. And then this is the file path. So, and again, these are all in my GitHub. I put a link down in the description below. So feel free to download all of those and, and use all those images here. I created all of them and, um, and Canva, really, really great tool. 
So for this, let's give this a name of skills. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Now inside of this, we're going to have another div. It's going to be our container here. So I'm just going to get, make this a little note container and whoop. And inside of our container, save that inside of our container, we're going to have another div and this is a P tag. It's going to be experience. There we go. And then underneath the experience, we're going to have another P tag and it is going to say these are the technologies I've worked with or whatever you think sounds good. I think that works for now. And then outside of this div, we're going to have another div here. And inside this div is going to be an image tag. And for this first one, I'm going to use HTML. Let's say HTML icon. There we go. And then just underneath this, that's what we want right there. So let's import this to kind of see how it's looking here. Sorry, my knees are starting to give me a little problems here. So let's do skills. There we go. And what we want to do next. Bam. Okay. So we've got our skills here. It's not defined. Let's import it at the top here. So I'm just press control space bar. Gives me the option to auto import it. There it is. So let's scroll down. Boom. That's what we want right there. It's uh, sized a bit funny. So we're going to have to take care of that. Um, let's go ahead and just grab this here because we are going to be using that as our background on our skills here. We'll just give that a class name. Whoop. Mm -hmm. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Now I'm going to drop that down and let's go ahead and I'm going to change the sizing of this icon as way, way too big. Um, and definitely don't need it that big. So I'm just going to give this a class name and say width of 20, which I believe is five rims, about 80 pixels there. And then we'll also say, um, MX auto to kind of throw it in the middle. That's what we want right there. Okay. So the way we're going to do this now, we can copy all of these down when we go back, but how we want to do this for our container. Let's do a max, excuse me, max width of 1000 pixels. The way I like to design things, you guys, is in, I like to fill out all of my HTML first and then I come back and style it. So that's why I do with custom styling. When now, when I'm using Tailwind, it's a little bit more difficult for me to do that. I'm still kind of finding my groove. So I, I'm loving Tailwind though. It's really, really powerful. You do a lot of really cool things in it. And ultimately, I, ultimately, I think, I think you save quite a bit of time uh, when you're coding. So I'm really loving it so far. And I'm going to continue using it for now. There we go. And I really think it kind of helped my skills as a developer. It kind of really helped me fine tune some things here. So that is our container here. Now for this top part here, boom, we we'll to do a class on this. Div. Actually, I don't think we even need anything on here, but for this P tag, we for sure will. Let's give a text of four XL. There we go. Now let's use the uh, text gray 300 there. And we'll give uh, one RAM padding on the top and bottom. Boom. That's what we want. Now mm, for this, let's do also, I'm going to try and group this together too. So it makes the most sense in line. I'm going to say border, 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 bottom four. And then we'll say border pink 600. Okay. Now I'm actually gonna take away that gray. Let's see if, no, let's remove that. So for this text gray, what I'm gonna do this text, I'm gonna delete this padding. And for this text gray, instead of repeating it, let's go ahead and copy it. And I'm just gonna cut it out. And then I'm going to put it here at the top. So it applies to all the text here in this, in this, um, container here in this element. There we go. So that way we don't have to style each individual little, um, element down here because we're going to be using a lot of these elements. So it's going to save some time and make your, 
make your project look a little bit cleaner here. So for this uh, text here, we already have this text, good color. Um, let's add some padding here. So PY four, so one rim padding on this here. That's what we want. Now for this div uh, down here, now what we're gonna be using, um, let's give this tag here, we wanna give this a class name, and this is gonna be the container for all of our icons here. So the container for all of our icons, what we can say is width, full, and uh, grid, now grid columns two, and then anything above small, we're gonna use the grid calls three, or let's do four. There we go, gap, four, text, center, and we'll do PY eight, padding top and bottom eight. There we go. So right now it is set to two, and then it goes up a little bit from there. So play around with it, you guys. If you're gonna use all eight, then I'd keep it this way. If you're gonna use six, I would do something like just two, then three, and maybe six, something like that, or just two and six would be just fine. So let's keep going here on this next div. I'm gonna give this, and this div here is actually the little uh, container itself for, for our little icon, including our icon and our text there. So let's give this a class name. Let's give it a little shadow, uh, a medium, and then shadow for our color here. Let's use... Let's use, let's see, 0, 4, 0, C, 1, 6. We can go ahead and close it off. Then hover, let's scale dash 1, we'll say 1, 10. Sorry about that, you guys. I need to turn that off. Duration, uh, we'll do 500. So let's see how this looks there. Have a little, that's looking nice, perfect. So, and all this is looking good. Let's give this here, MY, four that is perfect right there let's open this up now what we can do is just copy this down so now that everything is looking good i'm going to take this div here i'm going to copy it down that's two three four five six seven and eight boom perfect so we have eight now if we scroll this down deck back down to two that's what we want right there now let's change up these icons here so we'll do um for this next one I'm gonna see what we called it, CSS. So this is what we called it up here. So this next one we'll have CSS and this is gonna be CSS. And then let's do JavaScript, Java, JavaScript. I want everything to be capitalized here, boom. Then the next one we can do React image is what we called it react perfect and then let's do these other ones github i'm saying github next one is node we'll say node node.js and what are the last two mongodb and aws so we'll say MongoDB. This one's called Mongo. And then AWS. Now, like I said, this might be too many. You know, if you want to, and I'm not going to change this alt tag. Feel free to go in there and change the alt tags. Probably a good idea. I'm just going to leave it as is for now. So this is kind of, in my opinion, a lot of, um, of experience or technologies to list on a portfolio. I would probably cut this down by two. Um, may take away like for me personally i would probably take away github and aws i'm not fluent in aws I, I don't feel super comfortable in it i did get certified just a um cloud practitioner so good information there highly recommend of course is really really cool cool good information so that is looking good right there now um need to add in some more styling because that's not quite how we want that so we want that display kind of in the middle of our page here but if we use our pesticide here Good, good, good. That is not what we want right there. So this should take up the full height of the screen. So let's go in here kind of towards the top. So we didn't finish adding in all our skills, our, our uh, styling up here. So what I'm gonna say here is width, full, and then I'll say H screen. That believe that might be it there. That's looking good. I'm gonna 
get rid of those lines there. Now let's open this up. Perfect. That's what we want right there, you guys. Looking nice, looking nice. So for our next one, let's do our set, exp set experience. I want to change that to skills, but then, then we're going to do our work. So um, I'm just going to change this from experience to skills. I think that looks a little bit cleaner. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So now let's go in and before we forget, I'm just going to copy that down and let's create another component. And I'm going to call this work.jsx. Now for our work, this is going to be a fun one. Really, really cool animation in here, you guys. So RAFCE to generate our functional component. Now let's go ahead and import this. This is going to be our work. Auto import that one, you guys. Now make sure you smash that like button. Like the video, you guys. Hook me up with a like. And uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to be putting out some more uh, React content just like this here. So... Let's bump that down. Let's go ahead and enter in that background here. There we go. Now we can kind of see what we're doing. It's down here. You can't really see it yet, but let's give this one a name for our React Smooth Scroll. I'm just going to call it work. There we go. Now in here, let's do width full. Now what I want this to be, so this is going to take up a lot of room here, you guys. So, but only on mobile devices. So what I want to say is, um, Anything above uh, medium here, the medium breakpoint, we want it to display H screen. So, and then otherwise it's gonna take up uh, however much uh, space the, the elements um, require here. So, and then let's do our text color here, just apply to everything in this box. We'll do text gray 300, there we go. Now the next one is gonna be our container here. So let's do that, our container. Then in here, we're gonna have a div with a P tag here. And our P tag is going to say a work. Then just under that, it's going to say, check out some of my recent work. There we go. Now inside below that diff, but still inside of our container, this is going to be the, con what we're going to style right now is the container for all of our work here. So I'm bringing this up. What we're styling is a container for all of our projects. So for that here, let's go ahead and do a div here, and then we're gonna have a div for uh, the specific card item itself, grid item. So in the card item, we're gonna have a div here, and then we're gonna have another div inside here. Um, and this is gonna have a span, and then another div and inside here. Whoa, my span. I'm going to close this up. Span. There we go. And we have this div. And in here, we'll have an A tag. I'm just going to send that to home for now. And then here, a button. And we copy this down. So we're going to have two buttons. There we go. And that should be good right there. Now let's style some things here. We said check out our work. Let's put it so we can actually see that stuff there. So we've already imported it, looking good. So for our container here, let's do the max width of 1000 pixels. There we go. MX auto, we'll do padding of four, which is one rim. We do flex, flex column justify to center, um, width full and H full. There we go. So for the div kind of surrounding our um, our work here, we're just going to give it a padding padding bottom of eight, which is two rem. And what we're going to say with a work here, so give it a class name, and we'll say text for XL. There we go. We'll make sure we can see it. There it is. I'm going to drop this down. So work is for XL. Now we're also going to want font, bold, inline, border, bottom of four, then text, gray, 300, and then for our border color, we're going to pink, 600. And we could add all of these if we put them in H tags, we could apply them to our global styling. Um, but this is how we're doing it here in this video here. So for this one here, 
all our text colors in there looking good. Now let's just add a PY6 for a little bit of padding here on the top and bottom for our P tag. There we go. Now for our grid container, this is our grid container right here. So let's define this as grid. And like I said, we want the minimum to be one here. So it takes up the full width of the screen, but anything over small, which is 640 pixels, like we said, anything over small, let's just change this to grid calls two, just like so. There we go. And then anything over medium, let's bump this up to grid call three and let's give it a gap of four on all of them here. So that's what we want right there. Now for our card item, this is the card container for our card item here. And this one's gonna be the most uh, tricky one. It's not even hard, it's just a little tedious, a little extra code here uh, to add that little effect where we hover and we get that nice effect here. So what we wanna do for the card item itself is, um, so what we wanna do is actually add in a um, the background here. So I'm gonna add in this the styling here. So we're gonna use shadow large so we can have a, uh, a nice little shadow effect here. Then after our shadow large, let's give it a color here. And the shadow color is going to be, we're gonna define it 040C16. There we go, perfect. Now again, we have to group these just like we did before. So make sure you add the group style there. And then con container so we can define our widths here. And we want to do rounded MD flex justify center items center. And then we'll do MX auto for margin auto. And then I'm gonna add my own styling. This is the only custom CS we're gonna be using for this project. I'm just gonna call it content div. So go ahead and add that or add whatever you like here. Now for our div here, this is gonna be our hover effects here. I'll add a little note hover effects because our image is actually, we're gonna pull in here our image. Um, and the way we're gonna do that, we're just gonna add our styling in here. So let's grab in some images that we're gonna be using. So I wanna import, I'm gonna say work, IMG uh, from, and then let's go into our assets and it's called work IMG.jpg, I believe. Again, these are in the in my GitHub profile, so I threw them down in a link in the description below. Feel free to grab those, use all of them. So for these, um, whether or not you get hired is, is, you know, you have to have a really clean portfolio, but you, what you really need to have is some really, really nice projects on there. So I'm just throwing in some random projects I've done. Very, very small. Um, I think if you're gonna get a job in tech, you probably need some larger projects than this, but I'm just kind of showing you how to build this tutorial, uh, this portfolio out. So for our image, then also let's import, also, there we go. Also, we're gonna want to import another one. I'm gonna call it real estate. And these are actually just some past videos I've done. So feel free to check those out too. Well, work image.jpg, perfect. Now, oh, I was looking for something. It's saying real estate. Oh, didn't auto complete. All right, that's what we want there. No errors, looking good. We drink there, you guys. So for um, for our our card item here, this is our little card item. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on the next line here. So this is the only style we're gonna be using. And what I'm gonna say is style, open up some curly brackets here. And I'm just gonna import our background image. So the way we're gonna do that is say background, um, background image. We have to use camel case for using uh, CSS in react and then we have to put this in quotes but i'm actually going to use back ticks because i'm going to use a um, um a template literal here so what we're going to say is url then open up our our um parentheses here and then we're just going to say dollar sign then a quote and we can grab the work work img there we go let's scroll down boom there we go we're starting to see it so we need to find some dimensions in here. That's why we can't see anything. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this inside of our index.css uh, file here. 
And this is the only uh, CSS we're gonna be using, um, only custom CSS we're gonna be using here. So what we're gonna say, remember we gave that a, um, a class name of content div. This is our custom styling here. So what we're gonna say, we're at, importing the background image. So instead of saying background image here, we're doing that dynamically. Then in here, we can just say background repeat, and we want no repeat. Then we're gonna want uh, background size to cover, and then we'll want the background position to center. And let's give this a height of 250 pixels. There we go. That's what we want right there. That's perfect. Now let's go ahead and add this next one here. It's gonna be our hover effect. So content div hover. Now stick with me here, guys. We wanna do the back background image here. And what we're using is the linear gradient here um, to right. And then we're gonna be doing RGBA. Let's open this up. One, one, two, one, five, seven, two, five, five. And then let's give it an alpha of 0 0.8. Now I'm just going to use the next one. Whoops. It's gonna be HSLA. And this is gonna be 242, 74%, 61%, and then 0 0.8 for the alpha there. And that should be all the uh, CSS we're gonna be needing there, all the custom CSS we're gonna be needing for now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just close this back down. And for our work, let's finish this up here. We're not getting anything yet. We still need to add some more styling here. So for our hover effect here, let's do our hover effect in our, um, in our work, sorry here. So for our hover effect, we want to add an opacity here. So let's do opacity, opacity. We want it to show as zero. Then on hover, and this is the group hover, you guys. Remember we added that group hover. Then we want to change the opacity, um, this damn thing, sorry. Um, ah, sorry. All right, opacity to not 80. We want this to, to be 100. Um, where are we messing up here? Uh, div. This is jack something up. Okay, there we go. Sorry, thing pops up and screws everything up there. So that's what we want. The opacity, 100. We added the group right there. So on this span here, what we're gonna want to do is say for the span, let's give it a class name, text 2XL font bold, and we'll say text white, and then tracking wider, and that's gonna give just a little bit of letter spacing there. Now for our span, we'll say react JS application, there we go. Then for this next div here, let's give this a class name and we'll say padding top eight. It's gonna to push it down a little bit and then push everything into the center. And in this button, we're gonna have a demo here. Demo, and then this one is going to be code. So there we go. As you can see, if we get a little hover effect on there, we have our buttons. We still need to finish styling this thing. So let's go in and finish. So for this, we want to do um, for the button, I'm gonna go ahead and press this alt button so we kind of put uh, some type in two places at once there, save some time. So for the button, let's do a text, class name text center, uh, let's do rounded large and px four py dash three margin two and then bg white. We'll do text uh, gray 700 font bold and then we'll do text large to bring that up just a bit. That's what we want right there. However, we're not getting any background here. Let's have a look at that. So we have our div style here. We're passing through our image uh, dynamically. There we go. And then for all the other styling, we're throwing it in here. We're using the background repeat, no repeat, background size cover, and our position 
to center. That looks great. Everything is looking good there. Then this content div hover. Um, I want to make sure everything is working correctly here. So let's have a look. The content div hover background image perfect linear gradient to the right. And then this is looking kind of funky here. We need to add a comma here. I think that is the reason. Um, that might be the reason why it was not working. RGBA. We need to add an important actually. So let's make that important. Hmm. Let's do. Not liking something here. We need a comma in there. There we go. That's the issue. So let's have a look. That's what we want. Perfect. And we can still see through there. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want right there. So the reason we had to add the important tag here on our hover is because we're using this passing the di this style through right here. And what react was doing was just checking for the style right here. And it was completely neglecting our, uh, our style in here and on our, uh, index.css file. So that's what's going on there. And I think that should just about wrap it up for our little component here. And if we open this up to widescreen, there we go. So something's not acting right. We need to finish this up here. So it looks like we, I may have left something out here. So let's have a look. We have our hover effects here. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and save this. So it kind of cleans it up a bit, get where I'm at again. So I'm going to, put some space in here so I can see what we're doing. So after our hover effects are looking good. Now for our grid, let's so shadow large and then our, our grid, this is our uh, card container. Where's our card container? So what we want to do, actually, I put this on the, on the, uh, this is the whole container of all the, all our projects here. What I want to do is actually cut that and put it in here. Let's go ahead and save that. Now when we open this thing up, that's what we want right there. That's perfect. That's a little bit better. Perfect. Perfect. Now what we can do, let's go ahead and let's do this. So we have this copy down. So what we can do next, let's find our little, card item here. Boom, right here. So this I'm just making a little note here. Boom, container. And then this is grid item. So for this item here, what I'm going to do, see the bottom of it is right here. I'm, what I'm going to do is copy that down one time. And now for this one, instead of work image, we call that I think, real estate real estate. There we go. So let's have a look. Perfect. That's what we want right there. Now for all of these, boom, what I'm going to do is copy this right there, that grid item. And I'm going to paste this down twice. And what that's going to do is going to give me six total projects here. Boom. That's what we want. Now I'm just reusing these. Obviously you'd want to have six or, um, or less or more um, projects here, not the same ones. I'm just using this for the sake of the tutorial here. And when we hover, boom, we have an application here. And now for this, we, we want to do, this is a link here. Now um, it just goes back to our homepage, but what we want to do is add in that link demo for each one here. You're going to want to put this to a link to your demo of your application. Make sure uh, potential employers can demo your app. Otherwise, there's not much point of even putting on there at all. So make sure they can demo it. And then also for their button here, I would just make this link back to the uh, GitHub uh, portfolio for that project if you can. So make sure you do that there. So that is looking nice. So we have one down here on our uh, smallest devices here. As we scroll up past the 640 breakpoint, we're going to go to two. Boom. And then above medium. We're going to do three and it kind of stays there. So everything is looking nice. Everything is really coming together. So let's do our contact form next. So let's drop this back down and I'm going to open up my sidebar again here. Let's go ahead before we forget here. 
I'm going to copy down my background here and we can go ahead and close that as well. So now what we're doing is the contact form here. So let's go ahead and add our component here. Contact.jsx. There we go. R-A-F-C-E to generate our functional component here. And let's go ahead and give this a class name. I'm going to say with full H screen and then copy down our background color. There we go. Now let's go in here and import contact. Go ahead and hit control space, auto import. Make sure you type it at the top if it's not importing. And down here is our contact section. We can't see anything because uh, we haven't put anything in there yet. Now for our contact, we're not using any icons. We don't have to import anything. But what we want to do here is, uh, this is our outer parent container here. Let's not forget to give our name of contact here for our uh, React Smooth Scroll. And then down here, we want to say flex uh, justify center. And then we're going to do item center and let's do padding of four. So one rim. Now for our form, let's go ahead and generate a form. Now for our action, we want to leave this blank for now. We're going to use that when we use the get post.io, but for now we're going to leave that blank. Um, now inside our form, I'm going to have a div here at the top, and this is going to have a P tag that says contact. There we go. There's hard contact form right there. Now for our form, let's go ahead and do some styling for our form. So for our class name, class name on the form, let's do flex, flex column, max width. Let's do uh, 600 pixels on the max width there. And we'll do width full. There we go. Looking good there. Now for our div here at the top, this is going to be our contact here. So for this div, let's just give it a class name of padding bottom of eight. That's all we need there. Now for our contact, basically same styling we're doing on all the others here. So let's do text uh, for XL font, bold inline border bottom four. And then we'll do the border color here of pink dash 600 there. Nice little pink color there. Boom. That's what we want. Now let's do our text here. We forgot to do that. So I'm just going to add it in the top of our, um, let's just add it to this one here. Cause I think we might get a little tricky on the, on the form. So let's do text gray 300. Boom. There you go. So the higher the number, the darker it gets. So if we were to do a 700, I think it goes up to 900. So as you can see a little bit darker and then one would be uh, basically almost white. So we're going to be using the text, uh, gray 300 there. Now underneath this P tag, we're going to have another text here and say, submit the form below or uh, we'll say shoot me an email and we'll say my email my email at gmail.com boom there we go now for this let's give this a uh, class name and we'll make this the text gray 300 and then let's also do uh, padding uh, four there now Underneath this, uh, underneath this P tag, we have this div here. Underneath there, let's do an input. Now, for an input, text is fine. Uh, we're gonna have a placeholder, placeholder of name. And then we need to add the name property here. Make sure you add the name property of name. This is very, very important for gitform.io to work. So if you don't put the name property, it won't uh, work properly. So make sure you enter that name. And let's just do a class name as well of MY. Um, actually, we don't even need a class name on this one. So let's copy this one down and then we'll change this one to email. We'll change the placeholder, the email, then also the name here. We'll change that to email. And this one, we are gonna give a class name of just MY4, there we go and we'll do p2 to give it some padding and let's do i'm going to give this a background of let's see here open this up cc d 6 f 6 let's close that and i'm going to give this um a padding we'll do this on this class name here as well whoops 
There we go. And then the last one is gonna be a text area. Boom, text area. We'll give this a name of message. We don't need any ID in there. Um, and we actually, I don't think we're gonna need any, just we'll say rows 10. We don't need to use this. We're just displaying this as flex. And we do want to give this class name. So we get our background in there. Perfect. And let's give this a place holder of message. There we go. Perfect. Now let's add, we need our padding here. So P two, so we can have a little padding in our form as well. So that's perfect up oh, our name here needs our padding. Perfect. That's what we want right there. You guys, everything's looking good. So name message looks good. Looks good. Now just underneath here, but still within our form, what we want to say is uh, we want to have our button here that says let's uh, collaborate. And I know you might not be able to see it here. I'm going to open this up. I know my image is down there. So looks good right there. So we have our button. Can't really see it. Whoops. There we go. You can't really see it. Try and highlight it. So let's add some styling to this thing here. Uh, and for the styling for our button, what we want to say, let's give it a class name. We'll say text, text white. We'll do a border of two. And then we'll say, let's do our, for our hover, we're going to do BG pink 600. And then also for the, that was the background. So hover border pink 600. And we'll also want to do, um, let's do PX four PY. Three. And again, buttons is a great thing to add in your global style, global uh, styling here. So margin Y eight and let's do MX auto flex and then items center. Let's see how that looks there. Perfect. Now, if we hover on this thing, that is perfect. That's what we want right there. Looking clean. You guys, I hope you like that. Now, um, that is looking good. So let's go ahead and bring this thing up and see what we've done so far. Looking nice. There we go. Cool. So let's go ahead and work on the getform.io. So head on over to getform.io and go ahead and sign up. It is a free, 100% free. I already have an account here. So I'm just going to sign up here. And in here, um, let's see, you can't remember my password. That's okay. All right. Passwords don't match. What's up with that? All right, there you go. Sorry about that. Now you can only have one uh, endpoint or folder here. So this is once you are logged in, everything is free. Like I said, we can create submissions. We can set up automation. Really, really powerful. This is really, really great. Highly recommend you use something like this on your portfolio to kind of take it to the next level here. So what we want to do here is let's hit create. Boom. There we go. And we can call this whatever you like. I'm just going to call it portfolio because this is the project we're using here. And like I said, you can only have one here at a time. So just keep that in mind. So for I'm just going to do central time here. doesn't really matter now create. So what we want to do is we added in the name here. So what we're going to do is just copy this and we also make sure to add method post to your form. So let's go back to our form here and we're just going to paste that. Sorry, not in the name, but in the action there. So let's go ahead and paste that into the action. That is your code there. So don't use this one. It's not going to work. I'm going to close this account after I do the video. So make sure you get your own code. So it works for you. Now let's do method equal to post. There we go. Now everything should work. So let's go ahead and leave this open. Let's go back to our application here. Now what I'm going to type in is Clint and my email test and then say, this is my message. Let's go ahead and submit this and see if it works. Hey, there you go. So this is the what you get with getform.io. It sends you this page here. You can completely customize everything. So let me go ahead and go back to the previous page. Now let's go into get form and see if it has my submission. There it is, is my name. 
my email and say, this is my message just from only one moment ago. So this is how we use GitForm. That's all you need to do. Feel free, play around with the, the automation and everything. You can do a lot of really, really cool things in here. So that's all I'm gonna do for this tutorial. Maybe I'll set up another tutorial uh, explaining all the automation uh, capabilities of GitForm, but that is it for now. Um, so let's go back in here. Let's set up our React Smooth Scroll so we can click this and just have a nice transition up to the top of the page here. So let's type in React uh, Scroll here. We'll see what we can find. This is it right here, guys. Go ahead and click that. So we need to install it first. MPMI React uh, Scroll, or if you're using Yarn, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one here. So I'm just gonna type yarn add react dash scroll. That's gonna install our react scroll dependency here. So let's have a look. I just like to check, check and make sure things are installed properly. So we have our react scroll right there, looks good. So this will save you a lot of time uh, debugging potentially. So what we need to do is import right there. So you can copy that or you can just type it in because we actually don't need all of these for this tutorial. So in our, and we're only gonna need this on, on certain uh, forms here. So we're gonna need this on our nav bar. And we're also gonna use this on our homepage here as well, on our like hero component. So for our nav bar, let's go into the top here and we're to import and it needs to go inside the curly brackets there. Uh, sorry, not logo, but link. There we go. From, if I can type here, I'm like I said, I'm still using two um, from React Scroll. I'm still using two keyboards, you guys. I'm on my laptop when I'm at work. And when I'm on home, I just use some shitty Lenovo uh, IBM keyboard here. So sorry about the language. I wanna get a new keyboard, but I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. So, okay, so in here we have imported link at the top from React Scroll. Now let's go back here. Um, that looks good, see, boom, there we go. Now let's scroll down and see what we need to do. This is what we want to copy right here, this link tag here. So I'm just gonna copy that over and in here, in this LI, so this is our menu, right, on our nav bar. I'm gonna drop this down just a little bit. So just we have some more room here. For our, main, our on our list item, I'm gonna leave the list item there. And just for our home, I'm gonna add a little space there. And then, boom, I'm just gonna paste that. Now, I'm not gonna be using the active class for this tutorial. We are gonna be using the test. We're not using the spy. Um, I think we need that smooth in there. We don't need this offset, though it is good to have. So, um, but we are not gonna be using it in here. And then we can just delete that because we're not using any of that. So, and the text that's displaying is test one. So if we open this up, you're seeing it's gonna be, it's gonna say uh, test one instead of home. So let's just go ahead and fix that to home, boom. And this is the, why we use the naming uh, property here. So instead of just test one, we're gonna say home. And that's how we point to certain certain sections of our React application. So so it says two, let's go into our home. Boom, that is our home right there. So that's what we want right there, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and save this so it gets nice and pretty. So let's copy that. And I'm gonna do the same for the about. Whoa, that kind of jacks everything up. So for our about, and I'm gonna change this to about, and then we're gonna point it to the about as well. And then the same thing with skills. We're gonna point that to skills. There we go. And we'll change that to skills. And then kind of tedious, I know. We'll do that for work. Point to work. There we go. And then finally, let's do the contact. There we go. And we'll point that, point that to contact and we'll send that there. So let's go ahead and save that there. Sorry, it puts in these little spaces there. Excuse me here. I was gonna do this initially as uh, I was gonna live stream this and do it live with you guys so we have access to the chat, but I don't really have that many subscribers yet. So um, that's why I didn't do that. So there we go, boom. Everything is working properly. Assuming that you put in the name property on your elements there. So about, skills, work, and then contact. Boom, that's what we want. Now scroll this thing down. We're gonna need to copy this down because right now it's not gonna work on our, on our mobile menu because that was just the one section we did. So notice we click here, nothing nothing happens. So let's go down here and for this list item here, like I said, we're gonna keep the list item like so. And in here, what we probably wanna do is just wrap everything 
inside of uh, inside of the the list item here. So let's do that. Let's wrap everything um, inside of the list item here. So what we're gonna do here, home, same thing we just did, and I'm just gonna copy this one here. So home, and then we're doing the about. Boom, there we go. And then let's do the skills. There we go. And skills. The next one is gonna be work. Copy in that. Let's paste it over our work there. And then let's, well, jumping around here. Let's go to our contact. And finally, we'll copy that one over. That'll be the last one. Boom, now let's save this so it gets formatted nice and pretty. Boom, so you can see the, the sidebar is scrolling. However, whenever we click, our menu stays open. This is a problem. So let's go into our state up here. Nav, set nav. What we can do, since we already have this set to the opposite of what its current value is, what we can just say down here, let's add it to our uh, mobile menu only. We'll just have an on-click event and just run the handle click function. So in here, just on this link here, um, or, or the li, we can just say, let's see, we'll say on click, we want to run the, I'm sorry, curly brackets, we want to run the handle click function. So let's see if this works. We'll scroll down here, boom. So it's not working, and the reason that's not working is I put this on the i tag, the li tag. So this actually has to be on the link tag here. So now everything should work properly. We're down here at the bottom of the page. Let's click home, boom, it scrolls up to the page and closes the icon. How cool is that, you guys? So let's just copy this in on all of these here. Boom, there we go. And we're gonna run this function on every icon here or on every list item. So. Let's look and make sure everything works. We know the home works. Let's check the about. Boom, looking nice. Let's check the skills. That's what's up, you guys. That is awesome. Smash the like button. I hope you like what you're seeing here. I hope it's useful. And uh, like I said, you're gonna be not reusing the same uh, project on your portfolio. Put your own projects in there. Make sure they're badass projects with a lot of really cool features and make sure they look pleasing, you guys. So. You know, I'm not the best design person and you don't have to be. Use, a, a, you know, a framework like Bootstrap or, or Material material CSS or, or, or uh, you know, copy or get some inspiration off some other sites here. Just kind of make things look nice, okay, you guys? It's really, really important. It doesn't have to be, you know, designed by, by a, de a designer or anything. Just make sure it looks presentable, you guys, because the, these, these companies will be looking at that. And you want to make sure you stand out, guys. They're getting so many portfolios and uh, resumes, you wanna make sure you stand out. So that was my goal of this video, you guys. I wanted to, that really wraps it up. My goal in this video was to kind of show you a portfolio you could use to hopefully help you get a job in tech, programming, whatever it may be. Uh, use this for anything you want. So everything is looking nice as we can see, boom. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'm gonna post this down. I'm gonna put it in my GitHub right now and I'm gonna put a link in the description below. So like I said, feel free to clone this, change it up, make it your own or use it as is, I don't care. I hope it helps you get a job, but thanks for watching you guys. Smash the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be putting out some more React, React content just like this in the near future. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll see you on the next one.